It is Sunday, October 23rd in the NBA, and I'm back with my favorite picks. My name's Austin from Colin or Shot. We got two picks coming your guys' way. Let's do a recap from yesterday. Our fourth straight winning day. Our best bet of the day, Joel Embiid over 26 and a half points. Didn't matter what line you got him at as he scores 40 points. We are undefeated on our best bets of the year, 4-0. Let's make that 5-0 today. We added ba Paolo Bancaro's over 16.5 points. He gets that done. And then we had two losers, which were the Cavaliers team total under as they could not miss. And then John Moran, the Grizzlies, got absolutely blown out. So he has no chance getting his assist line. But either way, a 2-2 two two day. That's why we put more money on the best bit of the day. And we get a little bit of a winning day. We will take that. If you are new to the Call on Our Shot channel, what are you doing? Go down below, hit that subscribe button. We do these videos every single morning. They normally post between 8 and 9 a.m. Eastern time. So you have something to wake up to, drink your coffee and watch the videos. We have a couple other NFL videos. We know it's Sunday. So a lot of people will be watching the NFL. We have two of them. Well, this video, my favorite player props and parlays for week seven in the NFL. You can go check out that. It was posted yesterday afternoon slash evening. And then we have this one, which is talking about spread my three favorite spread or over under picks this weekend. We've been cashing spread and over under picks at like a 65, 68% clip. We've been crushing it. Player props too. You know how we do. Let's get into my best bit of the day. Let's go to 5-0. and oh. I will shout out all our new COS All-Stars at the end of the, uh, the video. So we appreciate you guys. And if you haven't become a COS All-Star, what are you doing? Go hit that join button on the channel. Help support the channel for all the research we do for free. Let's hop into my best bet. Go to 5-0, and oh, but one and a half units. This guy. Yeah. You see his name, Zion Williamson. We're taking this over 24 and a half points, minus 102 on FanDuel. Yes, I know there's a couple books at 23 and a half, but... I don't want to lay minus 130 juice on a Zion prop. And if he ends on 24 points, and so be it. I'd rather get minus 102, which is better value. Now, so far this season, we've seen Zion obviously return to the court. And he hasn't necessarily played the greatest, hasn't played terrible. I mean, he's still a very talented player. He's faced the Nets and the Hornets. And versus Brooklyn, scored 25 points, hitting this over. He's got 11 for 22 from the field. And then their second game against the Charlotte Hornets, he went out, scored 16 points on 7 of 19 shooting. Now, he was an odds boost victim. It's not his fault. But I don't see Zion shooting this poorly against a team like the Utah Jazz, who stink. Now, the Jazz have actually surprised a lot of people. What they don't do well is they don't play defense too well. And the good thing about Zion is despite this, we could see a blowout here with the Pelicans blowing them out. I don't see it, but it could be a blowout. The Jazz have actually been competitive in their game so far. But we still saw Zion play 30-plus minutes in that Nets game. And that was a blowout. They're up by like 26 points in the third quarter. And the best part about Zion is even if it is a blowout, he usually plays the beginning of the fourth quarter. We normally see starters rested, you know, that final six-minute stretch if it's like a 25-point game. But Zion's a guy that starts the second and starts the fourth quarter with the second units. That's normally when he scores a lot of his points. Now, today, Zion gets the return home in New Orleans, his first home game since, I don't really know, it's been a while. So I imagine he'll be amped up and the crowd will be amped up to see him too. And why we like him against the Jazz? Well, the Jazz, they have one, had no rim protection, and two, that has led to them averaging the most points per paint, points per game allowed in the paint this season at 66. We know a guy like Zion, he's not just out there shooting threes. If he starts knocking down threes, the Jazz might be in a world of pain. But this is a guy that's going to be coming into the paint and laying it up or dunking on people. This is what he does. He lives in the paint. It's hard to stop him. You just got to hope he misses. And he's missed so far this year, but with a little bit of rust. But I don't see him missing against the Jazz team with very little rim protection. Zion's a guy that's a 59.9% career guy from the field. And he's shooting 43.9% so far this year. Adds to a little bit of positive regression. And if the shot volume continues to be good, I'm going to keep taking Zion props. So I'm going to be honest with you guys. If they continue to set it at 24 and a half and he's consistently shooting, you know, 18 to 22-ish times per game, Zion's going to easily hit this over for the majority of the time. Zion scored 25 plus points in 22 of his last 25 games with 18 or more field goal attempts. Like a reminder, he had 19 and 22 field goal attempts in the first two games. And yes, I know he's not guaranteed to go out there and shoot 18 times. I've seen Brandon Ingram. I've seen CJ McCollum play. So if one of those guys gets hot, they're just like, eh, Zion who? But I just think at home, they're going to want to feed him the ball. You know, the crowd's going to want to be out there to see him. And I think he's going to be able to cook against the Jazz. We've seen Zion have games where he goes like 13 of 13 from the field. And while I'm not saying he's going to go, you know, not miss a single shot today, it is potential against the Jazz team that really struggles in the paint. And like I said, he's going to start with that second unit in that uh, second unit and majority in the second quarter and in the fourth quarter. So if it's going to be slow and, you know, with Brandon Ingram and whatnot on the floor, he gets those stretches just absolutely take over. And I think he'll be able to get it done. He's our best bit of the day. I love Zion, one of my favorite players to watch. Over 24 and a half points. Best bit of the day, one and a half units. Let's continue to push through. Talk about one more player prop. And this will be my last official pick. And you'll understand why in a second. Now, I will be taking a guy by the name of Anthony Simons. Taking this over 18 and a half points, which is minus 112 on Barstool. I went back and forth on him or Damian Lillard. This is an earlier start. It's a 3.30 p.m. 
uh, uh, Eastern time start, 12.30 uh, Pacific time. So it's an early game over in LA as they take on the Lakers, but I'm gonna go with Simons. And be careful if this line goes up to 19 and a half. I don't think it will. It's about 18 and a half on every single book. But 19 and a half, ooh. Anthony is the king of landing on 19 points on the dot. He's done it like five times in his last like 25 games. So be careful there. Now let's talk about Simons and why I like him. Now, so far he's averaging 19 points per game on the year. He scored 22 and then 16 points, but this is a short Blazers rotation. He's out there for a lot of minutes and he's been shooting it a lot. Even though Damian Lillard's out there, Still, 22 and 17 field goal attempts so far this season. And in his last game, he couldn't buy a buck. I think he went five for 17 from the field. And he hasn't really shot the ball particularly well so far this year, but he can heat up for the Lakers team. I'm not too scared about defensively. Simmons or Simons has scored 19 plus points in 20 of his last 25 games with 15 or more field goal attempts. And like Zion, I'm not guaranteeing he goes out there and shoots 15 field goal attempts, but he's gonna have the ball in his hands a lot. And like, I think he certainly can get that done, especially what I project to be a pretty close game between the Blazers and the Lakers. So we have a good uh, track record there. And like a reminder, he shot already 22 and 17 times this year. Ask him to get about, about 15, maybe 20 shots. I think that's gonna be the realm that he's gonna live in all year long. And like a guy like Zion Williamson, Simons is starting with the second units in the second quarter. He normally plays, you know, the first six, seven minutes, take him out for about five, and then he starts the second quarter, plays, you know, the first four or five, comes out for like two minutes and ends the quarter. And then the fourth quarter, when it's winning time, he plays sometimes the whole 12 minutes, which is awesome. Now, so far last year, Simon scored 19 and 29 points versus the Lakers. It's worth noting Damian Lillard didn't play in those games, but I'm not too worried about Lillard ball hogging today. I think he's going to have Patrick Beverly harassing him. And I think you have the better matchup with a guy like Simons, who's likely... I can't project who guards who, but he maybe is probably being guarded by Russell Westbrook, who we know isn't the best defender. And Russell Westbrook sometimes lazy on defense. So Simons, if he wants the back door, cut him or get wide open threes, perfectly fine with me. Damian Lillard's not afraid to pass the ball to his open teammates. And ultimately, I just think Anthony Simons has a pretty good game, especially after going five for 17 in his last game. A little bit of positive regression. This is about better, one of the better shooters in the NBA, at least from the long, from distance. And a lot of his shots are going to be from three. So we just need him to knock down some shots. Certainly capable of doing it i think the over under is like 224 for this lakers game gonna be a lot of points they should be about a 110 to 110 ish game so i think simon could certainly get us 19 points out of those you know 100 and whatever points that the blazers do score especially with that short rotation they don't really have a lot of backup guards now and for simon's over 18 and a half points those are my that's those are my two plays of the day now let's talk about a couple leans and i'm sorry i don't have a spread pick that i like today but i'll give you a lean i like the wizards plus three and a half I like kyle kuzma's over 16 and a half points and i still do like damian lillard's over 24 and a half points now as i record this video we don't have lines for a couple other games and there's a reason there's no official spread pick today i i just didn't really like anything on the slate i mean cavaliers team totals 100 percent soaring under as they're going to score like 80 points today and that's probably why i like the wizards plus three and a half i think the wizards are quietly a pretty good team Cavs on a back-to-back -back. they just made every single shot yesterday there's no chance they do it back-to-back -back games they could rest some guys today too we don't really know it's early in the season so that's why I lean the Wizards I think they could get it get an upset there but I won't make that an official pick because I just don't like any of the spreads there's a lot of big spreads in this one a lot of big favorites and I don't really like taking big favorites so early in the season and you saw what happened to people that laid the juice on this or laid either the money line or took Sixers minus 13 yesterday. Yeah, I was, I was an outright L to the Spurs. I just don't like playing those big numbers, but I also don't want to be trusting a team like, you know, the Thunder to go out there and keep, stay competitive with a team I don't really think is very good long term. So I already talked about Wizards. I think Kuzma, he, I lean his over. I think he's got to get a pretty good chance. He's going to shoot a lot against the Cavaliers. And then I already talked kind of about Damian Lillard. I think all these props are good. Yesterday, I talked about six props at the end of the video. I think those went five and one. But don't obviously bet these. These are just leans. I'm not going to add a play today. I know I added Ben Caro yesterday, but I'll stay away from adding a play. I think we'll go on to Monday with just these two picks, and hopefully we can have a fifth straight winning day. Now, as always, I promised the COS All-Stars. I love seeing this list grow. We've been helping you guys make some money. Go hit the join button, supports the channel. You don't have to do it, but it's a nice token of appreciation. You get our plays early, get some cool custom emojis, which I need to make some more emojis for the people out there. But we have a couple new all-stars. I'll shout you guys out and I'm going to butcher some names. So my, sorry in advance. We have Cameron, we have Rajalia, definitely butchered that. We have Michael, jo Jonatar, William, Killa Cam, Noah Clark, Bonte, Fredo, Ben, Mu Exino, definitely butchered that. Kyle, Tanner, Mr. Meeseeks, Reese, Jimmy, Asher, Oof, Mark, and Andrew Brink. We appreciate you guys so much for supporting the channel. I love seeing this list grow. If you want to become an all-star, 
go click the join button on the channel. You get our plays about an hour early while I edit the video and before it goes live. Thank you guys all so much for the support. We have those two NFL videos. Go check out those. My favorite player props and parlays for week seven in the NFL. My favorite spread picks for this week. We'll also, later on tonight, we'll have our Monday night football video for the uh, who's, who's playing on Monday? Uh, Steelers. Or no, it's going to be the Patriots versus um, Bears. Oh, God, I don't want to make that. Uh, well, well, I got some work ahead of me. I appreciate you guys as always for tuning in. This is Austin, and I'm signing out. Peace.